Also, welcome from my side. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Good, good. Uh, so, as uh, Klaus mentioned, we are hoping to spend the next 90 minutes together with you. Uh, the doors are locked, you can't leave anyway. Uh, I'm just kidding, so <laughs> feel free to leave if you find out it's not the right session for you. Um, this will be much less technical or even to a certain degree less PDS specific than uh, many of the other sessions yesterday, uh, during the days yesterday and today. And we're going to focus on the question, how do I get to a point where I have access to documents a whole, across a whole organization, not just in one department or for certain type of documents? And what is the best way to get there or the shortest route, 200% PDF QA as we would call it? Um, anybody in this field may <coughs> be able to link uh, to uh, a cartoon like this. Uh, so I guess some of you are already, already active in this field. Uh, and maybe you have done lots of things and you have not always been greeted um, with, uh, with approval from many people because people sometimes just don't seem to notice, but there is hope. So just to give you an overview of what's going to happen in the next uh, less than 90 minutes by now, um, we're going to handle this session as a, as a kind of an exercise. And I'll explain in just a second what that exercise means. Um, and the questions we are going to address in this exercise is uh, how would we define the goals for a what we call accessible document company, a company where all documents that get created, exchanged, provided are accessible in some meaningful fashion. Um, and once we have an, have an understanding of what the goals are, we will try to find out how to get there, what approaches can we take. And we believe there's a couple of different approaches that ha each have advantages and disadvantages. Um, we're hoping from some input from your end to find out uh, what the various advantages and disadvantages might be. And if all goes well, we will find out a few things that we have not known uh, before this session, and we will try to summarize that and come to some conclusions towards the end of the session. So what's the exercise? Just envision, just for the purpose of this workshop, you are a consultant uh, with an MBA background. So that's the money side of the business. Uh, and you're specializing in accessible document infrastructure. For, for some reason, uh, you have figured out how this works and how this could best be done. And your job is to inform or teach other people how to go about making their organization, their company, their government agency fully document accessible. And so we have a focus for this exercise. Just envision your customer for today is an insurance company. They have hundreds of employees, so it's not necessarily the biggest company, but it's, it's sizable. They have several departments, obviously, for the several, several things they need to do inside their organization. Um, and they have all kinds of documents, both for internal purposes and for external communication. They have publications, they have fillable forms, etc., etc., etc. So they have all the nice uh, things that you can have in the world of documents. Uh, your mission is that you're doing consulting now, but that you enable that organization, that insurance company, to, to become 100% accessible regarding documents. We will leave the other sites, the other, other aspects on the site, like web pages and so on, uh, by end of 2020. So we have some, we have some time. Yeah, that's three years uh, plus the months remaining in this year. So it's not a, a project we are expected to do uh, next week. Um, but it's also not a small company. And you will get some compensation for your hard work. And one third of your compensation you get after you have kind of installed the project. So that would be the end of this year maybe when you have triggered the, when you've done the consulting and triggered the initial implementation steps. One third you will get at, this, at the end of 2020 when everything that you are proposing has been implemented. But you only get your money if the goals that yourself have defined together with your customers have been reached. And another third of your compensation you will get at the end of 2025, like five years into the project having been implemented. And again, you will only get your money if after these five years everything still works as planned and as agreed upon with your customers. And not reaching a goal could mean 
budget is exceeded, or not all documents are accessible, but only some, or the quality of at least some of the documents uh, is not good enough in, in some ways, uh, or the whole approach is not accepted by staff, and so forth. So the important thing is you're participating in defining the goals. So it's not that the goals are imposed on you. You will work with your customer and you will set the goals, but you must also reach the goals. Um, I hope you can link to this uh, idea of, uh, of this uh, exercise and congratulations to your new job. Um, and I wish you all the luck you will need. So, let me check out. While Olaf is checking, uh, most of you should have a uh, paper, two sides printed paper with most of the facts on it. Otherwise, I will sell some more. Where's the rest? I printed so much out. Not enough? Some papers left anywhere? I'm searching for the papers. Olaf, just continue. So while class is making sure you have all the, the sheet in front of you that you have prepared for the session, let's start looking into uh, defining our goals. So the question is, all document-based document document communication, it should say, not documentation, all document-based communication must be accessible. Uh, what does it mean? What are the various goals that need to be achieved? So what are we talking about here? Mm. Um, the first step I would try to, to make the department chiefs more sensible for, 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 for our goals and for, for the um, task accessibility of documents. They should know about it. They, they don't need to know it all in deep. But they should know about it, and they, they should be um, hoped to be ideal. Okay. Um, for me, that would be the first step. Bring them all up, talk to them, make a date, and make a workshop with them. Two or three hours would be sufficient. Okay. So I wrote this down as creating awareness uh, for, for the management. In a, in a second step, I would, uh, with them, I would try to organize, um, to find out who in each department could be re responsible for the technical part. Mm -hmm. um, so determine Who is responsible within each department? Mm -hmm. And these will be responsible people will be multipliers for the department. Mm -hmm. um, and they need trainings, of course. An initial training, mm -hmm. how to make documents accessible, yeah. and um, they could carry it forward into the company. Okay. That would be my, okay. my first step. Coming back to the question, um, make them accessible by impaired, uh, impaired people, so like blind. Um, mm. There might be automated test suits, like from W3C, or let the documents pass these suits and uh, with, with without error as a goal. So I've written down, use people who themselves have some impairments and use tools for checking the quality of the results that they produce. Okay? 
<clears throat> so I don't know much about UA, so I came here to, to learn something about it. But for this question, I would uh, first try to clarify what kind of documents are, are, meant, are needed. For example, I think of messenger messages. How, how can you make them accessible? How, how can you make them archivable, even downloadable? Mm -hmm. uh, email is, is probably better, but messenger, certain communication goes over messenger now, there's no way to, to access that properly. So I don't know. Other documents, of course, are clear. We use all this stuff, but there are more and more coming, which we don't know how to deal with them yet. And you have to find out how messengers in the company work. You yeah. Yeah. work with desktop computers, and they have something like Telegram for them, well, or, 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 or they have Otherwise, they don't need a messenger. OK, that's it. All right, any other inputs to this question? Yeah, one. Maybe uh, analyze or unify uh, the processes of uh, how the documents are being created or standardized, so that's, that's a goal. First analyze and then making standards how the documents will be created for different purposes. Probably also explains the difference between accessible and not accessible documents by organizing uh, experiments with assistive, assistive technologies like reading loud documents of various types uh, that will help people to understand uh, what does this mean in general. So I wrote the other one down as document processes, analyze, standardize, and I will write this down as um, Accessibility 101. So just make create some basic understanding of, of what that means. All right. Let us see. Any other papers? No else? Okay. So we will disclose what we have thought of when we were pre preparing the session. Um, and yeah, from, other, from our point of view, definitely it's very important to understand what all the documents are that we are dealing with. So there must be some analysis process, uh, regardless of exactly who is doing it, but somebody has to find out what all the documents are. And we actually chose the example of an insurance company to make sure there are all types of documents, going from a letter that you write just for to a specific customer, to automated or, or document production that can be automated, like sending a, uh, statements about your insurance contract, uh, fillable forms, uh, publication, advertisements, just about anything uh, that can probably happen. Um, and we believe that these different types of documents may have to be approached in different ways or different options, uh, how you can ensure uh, they will turn out to be accessible once you are successful with such a project. Um, we also think it's important to, uh, to ensure uh, that you actually achieve the quality that you are looking for, um, especially over time. So it's one thing to teach maybe some person in, the, in your department something and expect that next week and the week after it's fine. But what about six months from now, two years from now, it may not be the same employee anymore. The employee may have different responsibilities. Or even uh, simple things like uh, the employee um, is not motivated anymore because, <laughs> because he just doesn't see the effect as I was trying to show uh, the drawing is on the second slide. So it's, I'm doing all this, but nobody cares. And this can happen, of course, because the person producing documents is not the person also actually in touch with the person benefiting from the document being accessible. There could be all kinds of things. So we believe um, you would have to define what quality you want to achieve, and we we'll also have to find out how to ensure the, the, this quality is achieved not just next week or next year, but in the longer term. Um, there's also interesting questions. We, we all, yeah, please go ahead. I think one point is missing the format, the document format. Mm -hmm. There can be different formats, which can be very um, difficult to transform in other formats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then I, I think we'll get to formats uh, at a later stage. As you may have noticed, except on the title slide, we have not used the word PDF UA so far. So then, then we wanted to leave this open. Yes, please. Uh, 
So I guess one, one thing you could do is to employ somebody who needs that disability. You could employ a blind person. Okay. Yeah, that was, was mentioned. So maybe involve people who them, themselves uh, have some disability or another. Um, one thing that we also think could be a challenge is by when do you need a document to be accessible? So just envisioning uh, you're writing a letter to the customer. Are you yourself going to make that document fully accessible? So it's, you just write it, it says it goes out. Or is it done by somebody else? Maybe a blind person sitting next to you uh, on a, at a computer doing the necessary steps to make the document actually uh, fully accessible. So, so we need the information of the document processes. Yeah. Very important. Yeah, it's true. Um, and as you can easily see, probably it's something very important to get out documents very quickly and not wait three days until your colleague who's in charge of uh, making documents accessible finds the time to do this. He could be on vacation, he could be sick, he could have a, a, a pile of documents on his desk, so to speak, and will have to work through all of them. Um, we also believe a challenge is in sustainability, and that's really something where we scratch our heads and are not fully sure uh, how we would go about this. Um, and this also goes, so we are a developer of, of one tool to make certain types of documents accessible. Um, and we can see from the projects we are, we are, we are interacting with, and I, I think this applies to class as well, who's even more at the forefront than we are as a vendor. It's like, you get the process going, and then you leave, and next year everything is gone again. It's dead. So whatever you've started is that next year. And I've seen this more than once. Yeah, the, the, the person that was so motivated and ambitious is not in charge anymore, and then pff, it's gone. So, and you are, are a great consultant, so you will have, have some advice <laughs> to your customer how to make sure this lasts longer than just a couple of months. Um, and another aspect is budget. I mean, so for, for our scenario, it's okay to ask for money, but you should ask in a reasonable manner. Yeah, you should not ask for a ton of money, just enough money to make this uh, to make this possible, but also not more than that because everybody wants to make to keep some money, not just spend some. So this is, and I have to check my next slide. Just to, yeah, one thing you found important to to dive deeper into is, um, so we started here, so we have all types of documents, right? So we have B2B, business-to-business -business communication. Insurance companies talk to other companies. Business-to-consumer uh, communication, to, they talk to their customers. Investor communication, like annual financial reports and so on. All the marketing and sales and PR stuff that needs to be done. Uh, and then all the internal communication, which is also important. Yeah? So there tends to be a lot of communication inside the insurance company. So what, what types of documents can actually appear? Can yes, I please. Just make one statement about the, the goals. So I don't know maybe it's a goal or already the solution, but I think I would try to make it as automatic as possible without uh, trying to, to shape processes that they, are, they need uh, the little human intervention as possible. Yeah. <coughs> So just think about why over the writing, which type of documents do you have in mind that can appear in an insurance company? Uh, I just have a question. Um, did we talk about what kind of software is used and how these documents might be created? We just think like letters or stuff like this. Okay. But wouldn't in an insurance company of this size some kind of software be used to generate all these documents? There are not 1,000 secretaries typing all those letters. <laughs> so we have to talk about software. Software is something we have in mind for later. We will talk about it in, uh, I think, several minutes. 
But now just let's start with the type of document because many people starting with the software, but uh, in, in the insurance companies with several 100 employees, they might have several word versions, for example, or several other cases, yes. And so we wanted to start with the types of documents because several types of documents need several kinds of works to have done in the document or in the software to get a good result at the end. Okay, also more scanned documents. Good point. Especially <laughs> 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 more scanned documents, that's the best one, of course, yeah. But just, just think about what kind is happening. Olaf mentioned, for example, just normal letters to customers. This might be the, one of the easiest ones, but there are more versions of documents or types of documents in the company. Email. Is it a document? Is it email a email document? <laughs> forms, of course, yes. Forms is something we had in mind too. Invoices. Oh, my dear, invoices. Spreadsheets. Spreadsheets. Sorry? What, what kind of spreadsheets do you have in mind? Because spreadsheets is more a technical term. So. Okay. <coughs> what was here? Contract forms? Some kind of contracts? Contracts, proposals. Proposals. Photos. And this new? Some kind of protocols. Transcriptions. Transcriptions, protocols, something like that. The original document is the, the speech. The voice recording, yes. Already put, translating it into text is already a, a kind of transcription, yeah. <coughs> Presentations. Presentations? Presentations, like yeah. yeah. <laughs> something like that. Special document extensive information. Sorry? Special document extensive information. With documents with sensitive information. Do you have something special in mind? Oh, the telephone number of the president might be something. Yes, and the documents from human resources. Yes, something else? Photos and images. Photos and images. And also videos. Videos? Maybe there are some video playing, some playing materials as a video file. Videos and photos. How do we do Does play a role, so we talked to, to insurance companies and it's a Major pain already without accessibility. <laughs> <laughs> Something to add from your side? Records, XML form data was an example. Of course, yes, so policies. <laughs> yeah. Budget reports? Yeah, reports. So I have reports, yes. Covered. We had it a lot of times. Anything missing? Class, anything missing? Hmm. Russia? Sorry? Russia. Uh, brushes? Yes, something like uh, sales material. Yeah. It's flyers. Flyers, yes. <laughs> Is the website a document? Internal process documentation. Internal process. Is there a short word for that? Manuals. <laughs> <laughs> Olaf has to write many, many more. Internal manuals, I call the yeah. now. Yeah. Something else? Construction drawings. Construction drawings. For the new headquarter, maybe. No, 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 no. Because the customer has a problem and the insurance should pay, but they need to research. Yeah. The house collapsed and somebody has to be blamed for it. Oh. You need a drawing of how the house was constructed. Or Part like that. Lists. Sorry? Part lists. Part lists. Uh, some kind of inventory. <laughs> okay. What else? Oh. Yeah. Hmm? Surveillance camera. So <laughs> they <laughs> <didn't spell laughs> records. I think is that something like videos. So it's over there videos. Already. But it's true. It's true. Checklists was something else? Something you need to fill if you visit a customer, for example? 
Maybe there's some programming done in, inside with insurance. You have yeah. documents, documents, for example. Okay. Programs. Programs? Yeah. Soft code, you mean? Yeah. Some ugly stuff. I think soft code is easy. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's more we get, or? That's more than what we have compiled, but there's yeah. one bit missing, at least I have not written it down, I believe. I have HR documents. Okay. <laughs> Incoming correspondent emails for letters. Oh, just letters? Yeah. yeah. So I, I, would, I would argue that letters can go out and come in. And yeah. for paper letters, we have scanned documents. So that's, I think that's covered. Yeah, what about messenger things? So uh, yeah, I, I'll write it down. Chat things. Hmm. I put it in quotes for messenger in the various flavors that we have. Company website? Yeah. Website? Yeah. Yeah, the, the invoices, statements, I think it's similar class or type of documents, yeah. At least one beast is missing. Fill in the forms. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all because my handwriting is difficult to read, you know. <laughs> Okay. All right. So, what did, did we think about? Uh, I have to move to this. Take the as well. Yeah. I think that's not everything one to one that we wrote down, but it's quite the same. Literature in, in each case, contracts, invoices, statements, fillable forms, for example. There's yep. a lot of document types in companies. Okay. So. Uh, um, from my point of view, there's two things to see. These types of documents are very different. Yeah, it's it's really a different thing whether you think of an invoice or, or a statement about your contract as opposed to a fillable form, as opposed to a video that you have to deal with for whatever reason. So it's it's all kinds of documents. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is we should focus on documents, and um, I would consider something like a website not as a document. You can, of course, argue on technical level an HTML page is a document. That's, that's not the document we have in mind here. It's like really one thing you create and give to somebody else. Uh, and the way websites are developed and provided is usually happening in a slightly different manner. You just have some more focus. We will, you will think of the one thing that somebody creates, some person or some process, and then hands over to some other person, provides to some other person to read or consume or interact with. Um, and but apart from that, I think more or less everything counts as a document here. Good. So, looks like a big task to me to address all these. Um, next question, and it, it was brought up already in, in, in some way. Um, documents don't fall from the sky. Somebody has to make them at some point of time. Um, and. So who, who are, what roles do people have that create such documents or what processes exist in an organization like an insurance company that just spits out these documents? And I think it's important to, to think about the various people. Graphic just, designer. Yeah. Um, just need to start a new piece of just paper here. Slide, yeah. Maybe just take in mind what your company does, what people are working there, what they're doing each day, and then think about who's, for example, creating documents. Sorry? Accountants, for example. Salesmen. Salesmen. Customers. Customers. Secretary. Just give all of them time to write it down. <laughs> Customer and then? The secretary. Secretary, yeah. Lots of lawyers. <laughs> hmm. These documents are never accessible. 
All right, think about an insurance company who's machine working here. Machine generated. Machine generated, yes. Don't have to be a person, can be done by a machine. But who's teaching the machine to generate the document? <laughs> Teacher. <laughs> Marketeers. Sorry? HR people? Statistics people? <laughs> Financial. <coughs> Somebody who's responsible for the financial part of the company. People who do the protocol meetings. Protocol people, peoples. Uh, I think it's the <laughs> Yeah, okay. something like that. <laughs> Customer care, yeah. <laughs> Customer care or support, <laughs> something like that. How about people you buy services from? Ooh. Supplier. People you buy services from. Suppliers? Supplies, yeah, for example. Business partners. Management? But they only produce slides, right? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Another stuff? General facility? Management. Facility management. Something like a um, yeah. housekeeper or <laughs> drivers. drivers, yeah? Mm -hmm. The protocol for the car. <laughs> IT stuff? We're going to some more of these details, so that's why I'm not writing down anything right away. So maybe also a little bit on the edge. Uh, legal bodies, for example, laws are changing very rapidly in insurance uh, settings. So you have to, um, you have to deal with these laws and um, regulations. Something that comes from external, for example. Yeah, so who do the legal body of the, you know, the parliament? Legislation. Uh, yeah. uh, Many people. Okay. So, what did we think of? And I have one point for the type. I'm missing a little bit um, how many from each type of documents will be created in the company. Is yeah. That, that, important yeah. To have that will be the second part. We do all. One of our goal was to have all documents accessible. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. That's important later for the process. We come and later to the Z part. Because he wants all automatic and then I have only one for... <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, expensive automation. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's true. What, what can we do first? What was the, what is the easiest stuff? Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's, it's important to understand which volume of documents is associated with each of these roles and each of the types of the documents. So just uh, let's check what uh, class and I thought of. Um, yeah, I think we covered every everyone that you proposed, and then you proposed some more. So it was a worthwhile exercise. Again, you can easily see it's lots of different types of people. It's different volume of documents that may get created. <coughs> it's also very important. Um, so the goal is that this is kind of a recap of this first block of this workshop. Is we, we looked at lots of documents and lots of people or lots of 
processes and mechanisms that create documents. And because we want to make the company 100% accessible regarding documents, all of these have to be looked at. So that's also very important. It's not sufficient to just think about a certain business or consumer documentation and not think about internal communication, for example, or to only talk to certain people in our organization and not to others. Um, so all documents, all types of documents, regardless of who's creating the documents, um, including externally provided documents. We had something like scanned documents, which could be a challenge, yeah, because somebody has to turn them into something that has so much information in it that you can consider it uh, to be accessible. But it's also all kinds of other content that may come from outside. Um, documents with externally provided content. So that's also a major pain for anybody doing brochures and that kind of stuff. You have this nice infographic. You want to use it in your brochure. But the infographic is provided from somebody else. You cannot teach that provider to make it more accessible than it is. And it may just be a JPEG image or just a vector drawing. There's not much in it that makes it accessible in any relevant fashion. <clears throat> and then what we also tried to, to point out at the beginning, um, there must be some quality control in place, so not make it somehow accessible, but really accessible. Uh, make it accessible today and one or five years from now. Uh, and the rule is no exceptions. There's no corner that you can not touch. So everything must be addressed. We have three years to run the project, so it's not overnight. Um, and again, there's no strict limit to the budget, but you have to justify the budget. So how do we get there? And we already had heard some ideas about how one might go about this. Um, and let's, uh, let's start here. It's, it's a bit open-ended. We will try to find our way through this. Um, please have in mind different types of documents, different roles of people and different mechanisms. What do we do? Start with the easiest. Good start with the easiest. <laughs> um, Just do not start with the infographic. <laughs> What would be easiest from your point of view? Yeah, for example, um, air contracts or documents which just include text. Text documents, okay. Plain text documents. Plain text documents, yes. Hmm? Uh, minimize the type of the document. Minimize the type of the documents. Yeah. Less types of documents. Is it realistic? Yes. Yeah. Should be, yeah, of course. Yeah. Braille printer? Hmm? A braille printer? Braille printer? Braille printer to print out everything you get? Leave digital world and go analog. <laughs> Also, set up a document management system so that at least you know what are the documents you are going to make accessible or where they are stored. Centralized storage. So I'm writing down, use DMS, document management yeah. system, so you have a system rather than yeah. uncontrollable individual processes. Yeah, yeah. anything else? So yeah, just, just take a look what is there at the moment, what maybe templates might be there at the moment, and then analyze it. And minimize, minimize the number of templates. Okay. Separating strictly the content creation from the design process. <laughs> <laughs> Separate design from content. Mm -hmm. Another idea from your side. What kind of software is used? Find the software for creation or processing each document type. Because form. Form of 
temporal requires or then legal documents. You know. But first of all, we have to find the existing software. Yeah. Audit the existing software for making audit of the processes. So you're saying find out which software to use for which type of document? Yes. There must be some tools to create. <coughs> At least we hope so. <laughs> or minimize. So find out which software to use, whatever it is, like a mainstream tool, special tool, whatever system for which type of document. And again, uh, minimize. I will just write down minimize. So I don't think it doesn't work. Um, we are now discussed points that we start at the document creation and we want to achieve our goal by reduce something which is very difficult to um, Achieve in companies that they have to start this new document creation process. Um, for example, what is all with the archive documents? Um, they are not um, possible to change the type and to reduce types. I think it's very difficult to do this. Also, to set up DMS system, it's not so easy. It's easy to say, but um, very difficult to do. We didn't start with a message that it would be easy now. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I think also what is achievable. It makes yeah. more sense to have some goals yeah. which yeah. I can delete. You're in charge to do it and you get a lot of money no. if you're doing it right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> quality measurement system, how good are your documents? Quality measurement system to see what you reach maybe. Yeah, and yeah. We, we how have it changes in time. Mm. We have to define different uh, responsibilities inside the company. Responsibilities. Who's, who's responsible? Responsible for, responsible for different kinds of oh, processes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't think it's it's a painless process, regardless of exactly how you do it and everybody understands that in a larger organization changing any system is a thing that can take five to ten years and fail more often than succeed and so on so we, we understand that but still it's an upper management decision to do this so there will be some readiness to suffer but then i can say oh please get used to one document type and then we can achieve the goal maybe you will be fired as a consultant <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you also have like, a portion of accepted by staff. 100% <laughs> <laughs> yeah, accessible but not profitable anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you have to live in reality, so that's, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, any other takes? So uh, what to do, how to approach, how to slice the cat, or to skin the cat? It's, uh, Similar to, to your point about monitoring, you have to define um, some how do you get, cr criteria which you want to measure. So that's not, not so easy. Yeah. Verification tools are mm -hmm. So you know when you have 100% accessibility. Okay. So. Also, will lead to business processes as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, only a consultant for accessibility. No? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you may have to fight with the other consultants. <laughs> okay, so let's look what we thought out, thought about. Um, so we structured the whole thing in a certain way. That's definitely only one way of looking at this, but that from what we have run into in terms of projects seemed relevant and uh, so a uh, frequent approach is that especially where people make documents and not systems um, that in many cases it is tried that to enable the person creating documents to make accessible documents 
So we do a lot of work in, in the area where InDesign is used, a rich layout uh, tool. And uh, we are happy to sell tools to anybody who wants to make accessible PDF from, from InDesign documents. And then the approach is you go to the layouter or the creative person and try to teach them how to change the way they create the documents so they become more accessible. They have to do th things differently in the document and then they have to use a special tool and they have maybe some, some checking that in the tool that helps them decide whether they have done the job properly or not. So that would be one approach to do this. And you can do this as much with Word or with other document types, uh, so it's not limited to InDesign. Um, but it quickly becomes apparent that this implies a few things. So you have to buy the tools. Yeah, can happen. We are happy if you buy the tools, but um, you have to buy training because you, you need, essentially for every tool that I know, you need some training to understand how the tool works and how you have to make use of the tool. Uh, and I have a few cases in mind where like, some person was enthusiastic about doing this and one year later, because of day-to-day -day responsibilities, they just more and more forget uh, to do this or they do it in a very hasty fashion and it doesn't end up in good quality anymore. So you will have to have some monitoring, some quality assurance. Um, and it, it sometimes feels good because you just start and you just do it and you can do it right away. I, I send you to a training tomorrow and next week you can start. So that's good. Um, but there's a lot of risks uh, associated with that. One other approach that at least some larger companies or organizations are taking, they have a team of specialized people. So it's not the secretary and not the manager, not the accountant that makes sure a document is pr produced in an accessible fashion. It's a department, so to speak, or a task force that gets all the documents, does the necessary things, and then uh, sends them back to the author or sends them onward to the recipient. So that would be another um, approach. Um, it does have its advantages. You have to train fewer people. Uh, you have to buy fewer tools. Um, the task of these people will exactly be that, to make documents accessible. They don't get sidetracked into their day-to-day -day responsibilities. This can be good. These departments don't scale very well. So if you have a high workload, they, they may fall behind, and then maybe you don't have enough work for them. They sit around idle. Um, so that could be a problem. Third is use automated processes as much as you can. And that was already mentioned a couple of times. And I think it's a very valid uh, approach to identify the types of documents that you can actually create or produce in a more or less automated fashion. It's definitely true for things like invoices or statements about your contract and stuff like that. And I think already today, in most cases, at least for the more successful insurance companies, it would, it would be created in an automated fashion. But maybe there is more to do. And another one is, um, especially for, for the tricky stuff, maybe just outsource it. There are specialized service providers. So if you have the sales brochure and it's done in a very complex fashion, maybe you can teach your own designer to make this fully accessible, but maybe it's just not worth the effort because you make like uh, one such brochure every month or every quarter, and then during, during the rest of the time that person is doing completely different things, uh, maybe just hand it out to, to an um, external service provider. Pay them some money. It may feel expensive, but it may be much less expensive than doing it yourself. And the quality may, or in many cases, will probably be better because that's what these people specialize in. And probably they figured out how to do this. And what's also important is uh, for each of these options that you compare um, them in terms of total cost. So is it more, more cost effective to teach every secretary, accountant, uh, manager, etc., to use Word, Microsoft Word, in a fashion that produces uh, accessible documents? Or is it more efficient to invest in the medium term into a process, maybe a document management system, where people don't interact with Word anymore, but they interact with the system. They still write the same letters or statements or memos or whatever, but they write it into a system where the system has some control over how documents are created once finished. A couple of other ideas that we had in mind when we discussed this in preparation of this workshop. Um, 
simplify your world would definitely be a theme, I, I, I guess. It was mentioned a couple of times uh, already. Um, have fewer types of documents. Yeah, make, make the documents simpler. I think that's, that, that can be the source of, a, of quite a bit of uh, optimization. If your document is simpler, if it's just text or text focused, focus on text, and has a very obvious text flow, it's much easier to make it accessible than if it's a kind of fancy document uh, that is much more difficult to provide in an accessible fashion. Um, you all will have guessed it. We always had PDF UA in the back, at least of our two heads, uh, because we think it's a very valid uh, format uh, to exchange documents in an accessible manner, but they're by far not the only ones. Um, so you have to look at options like sending out a Word document. So Word is considered pretty accessible by most users, not necessarily by everybody. <clears throat> but because everybody will have, regardless whether they have uh, some impairment or not, maybe interacting with the program Word already, and it might be easiest for them to navigate inside a Word document, find stuff, and present it to themselves in the fashion that's most useful to them. Uh, EPUB 3, it's personally my least favorite <laughs> option, but it is useful for some people. It may be useful for certain types of documents, so maybe it is useful to have your sales brochure, maybe also as an EPUB 3 document for people who want to read it on, on certain tools. Or HTML, maybe you don't need to send a document. Maybe it's okay to have a web page with the same content. Now, it could be like the public-facing website. It could be the internal website, the intranet. <clears throat> so maybe not using the classical document in the first place is a solution to making documents more accessible. Uh, the very important thing is um, life does get easier if, if you have to individually create documents, if you can use templates. Uh, it's very hard to teach people to know everything about accessible document creation. It's much less training required. If you can give them where it becomes difficult to make the, the right to, to create the content in a non-accessible fashion. And you can make a word template where you kind of steer people towards doing the right thing. Yeah, provide the title where the title belongs, provide the heading where the heading belongs, and not let them play around with all the features you have in something like Microsoft Word. Um, or even go further, and I consider this to be yet another variation of the template theme. Provide them a web-based front end and only allow them to enter things in the right way. And if you have a heading field or a title field and a flow text field, you can only enter the heading in the flow text. You cannot go fancy. And then in the back end, you would have an automated process. So we, we would invest once in a process that can take that content and turn it into maybe a PDF UA document, maybe even a Word document that certain people may find easier to use. Um, and all in all, move more document creation to automated process. That was mentioned already by a couple of people in the room. That would probably at least make it easier to have a sustainable process. Um, and then we, we talked about Messenger and email and so on. So these, these live in a gray area. So as far as I can tell, an SMS message or a WhatsApp message or what, any of these message types uh, tends to be relatively accessible because it's text. So there's, unless you, you, you add lots of uh, fancy drawings that are just drawings and not, not easily consumed by certain people at least, if it's just text, you have much less of an accessibility problem. Photos are a different story, yeah. And that may be something of, we have listed it on, on our sheets here, uh, something we didn't think much about, to be honest. So we didn't th really think about photos and, and films or videos and so on, or audio recordings of a, of a discussion with the customer. Um, that's a bit, it's an extra challenge, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. I do know that insurance companies use the so customers send a video recording of their broken car after an accident. Yeah, now make that accessible <laughs> yeah, for people who can't easily see or, or have some, some uh, defects in, in color vision and, and so on. It's like, uh, yeah. 
So that would be on the list on <laughs> extra challenges. Well, in, in, in videos or films, you have audio descriptions, and you could outsource something like that. And say, OK, we need somebody who makes audio descriptions for videos with, from accidents. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, <laughs> Yeah, I've discussed this topic so over the workshop in March at, at Dean here in Germany, in Berlin, about uh, archiving video in this case. Mm. Um, but it, it's really true. So, so if, if you have a car accident and you want to document towards your insurance company what is broken and how it is broken, lots of people just take their smartphone and zzz, zzz, they go around and all this is broken. Yeah? Mm. The problem with, a, with this transcription is, or with an audio description is, it may not reflect the really important aspects of the recording. So, and because it's about legal things, it can become questionable. So the blind person may understand what's, what's on the smartphone video, but does the blind person get an accurate, legally accurate description of what is being shown? And maybe that the broken light is not mentioned, but is critical to understanding the... So that's... Anyway, we don't have to fully discuss this here, but there are challenges that go far beyond what you have with a typical letter to a customer. And it may not even be clear how to make this fully accessible. And it may become the one exception. <laughs> okay. But anyway, talking about the, the, the idea of avoiding documents. So the focus is on making documents accessible. If you don't have the document, you don't have to make it accessible, right? So if you have just plain text emails, I don't think there's an issue. It's as accessible as, as, as documents get. And that may be an option, yeah? Just go away from all the fancy formatting and layout and just plain text. Well, maybe just sure. uh, some insurance companies now offer uh, apps for the customers to just take a photo of a document or a letter or something. Mm -hmm. So this is also it's a photo. It's even worse than scanned, but uh, it's, it's important information. Yeah. yeah. If it's really a document, I would uh, consider it to be a where do I have it? A scan document? I mean, taken, taken by, by a photo, by it, more or less. And I think there's software in place that could at least OCR most of the text. And Otherwise, they wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but of course, there, there's no guarantee how accurate the OCR process is. Um, OK. There's also something that, that, that actually. Person? I One front yeah, go ahead. I have uh, one thing about the option um, that you can outsource your document to an external provider because my experience is that it's uh, not that easy because um, you really have to check the document, the PDF UA you get, um, and often you have to, to give it back and um, it, so you really, you need somebody who can really check the PDF you get from the external yep. provider. It's not that you, you just give it to him and then everything is fine. Yep. So you, you need a um, kind of workflow for this as well. Yep. Agreed. It's definitely true and I've seen uh, different levels of quality from different service providers, so I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> like drastically different. different. Uh, but, but I think it would, you can probably figure out who is one of the better service provider and you may have to try a couple of times or get the opinion of several consultants or whatever, experts. Uh, but speaking of, of uh, outsourcing uh, such um, tasks, so I, I'm not from, I'm, I'm not, I don't have any idea about remediation, as, uh, that's, what, that's a term for, call, for calling this. Um, and so I uh, interviewed people who are in the business because I wanted to find out what, what the cost level is. Because normally if you, if you ask uh, such a service provider, how much do you charge for this brochure, like a 16-page brochure? And they say, eh, 500 euros. And I say, oh, not quite in my budget. Um, or I, at least I wasn't expecting that much. Um, but if you drill down, so the typical thing is really that they even charge 25 euros for a one-page letter. Or like I wrote down 250 euros for a 16-page brochure that doesn't have anything fancy in it. That feels like a lot of money. Yeah, if, if you produce lots of brochures, because you may have to have for all the type of insurances and maybe several languages, like 100 brochures, 200 brochures, it's quite some money. But I drilled down some more. 
in my interview. So what do you do with like customers who who have volumes of of documents of all types, and then the price goes down like this because it makes it possible for everybody to work in a much more efficient manner. Yeah, if, if I just send one letter to be to be made accessible, there's a lot of overhead. Yeah, you're making a business arrangement, and the invoice has to be written, and this and that. That alone costs more than 25 euros, if you're honest. Um, but if you can establish a process where you have a service provider that does all this for you, uh, you have an established process, how you hand over documents, maybe it's a self service portal, it's some automated workflow, so it's a hot folder or something, and they get, get, just get pushed to the service provider, they push the big ones, they have done their job. Um, they can operate in a much more efficient manner. They can allocate people accordingly, so there are certain people waiting for stuff to be done, as opposed to, oh, when is the next letter coming? Maybe tomorrow, okay. Uh, <laughs> and then prices go down to something like a uh, price per page of, let's say, one euro, and it will always depend on how complicated documents are, but like the average page could be down to one euro or even less if you have volume. Um, or a 16-page brochure, if it happens more often than once in a year, can go down to like even 15 or 20 euros, which is, to me, sounds affordable. It's, it's, it's a reasonable price tag. Um, and this is not important because I get uh, money for each uh, job I send to my friends, <laughs> but it's important to, to, to assess cost implications. Yeah, so if you have like 10 brochures every year, maybe it's easier to use, use an out, uh, outsource service provider as opposed to teaching your graphic designer to do it. Yeah, because 10 times 25 euros is 250 euros, and how long can you teach somebody for 250 euros? Okay, so just just uh, an on the side piece of information that I found interesting. Um, yeah, and, and, and that has to be seen in context of how do you enable your own organization, your own people, uh, to be able to write me? Yeah. Did I eat my microphone? No. Um, like knowledge, who does have the knowledge, expertise, training, keep up the motivation, uh, what about new employees entering your organization, what about freelancers, people working from the outside, uh, especially for the more creative stuff you may be using. Freelancers, because they are less expensive, and you don't need them all the time, uh, eight hours every day. Uh, tools, you may have to buy tools, or you may have to invest in your own tooling to enhance your own uh, system, uh, quality control, monitoring. It's, it's a big call if you want to do each and every bit of this for each and every type of document um, you produce. Um, that was a list of topics we could discuss if we had much more time. <laughs> Um, these tend to be the stumbling blocks. Like you say, ah, oh, I make the invoices and the letters accessible, and then you run into your first uh, complicated diagram, or there's actually a mathematical formula on the page, or uh, ah, what about these items based on symbol fonts that are everywhere in your text? And yeah, you have to do something about this, but what and how? And can your tool help you actually do this? And yeah, or complex tables. Yeah, you may have to have these complex tables where that explains which fees you have to pay when and why, and it's like in nested in multiple ways and um, and um, and so on. Custom. Well, it took me a while to regain my consciousness, uh, but uh, nobody else seemed to be choking on the cost. <laughs> 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 insurance companies from the other side where they receive documents and uh, I don't know a mid-sized insurance company probably receives 150 million letters a year it's a B2C organization incoming you know, I'm, I'm talking about uh, a good portion of that is uh, anything now it's not longer a paper and we run some OCR and stuff like that and, uh, but it's a lot of stuff like even as with arbitrary attachments and so on making this all accessible is definitely what is it, a bucket piece? It's not going to fly. Come on, nobody has that much. Um, even if it's justifiable, it's just not there. Um, an example given, like, uh, let's say, the litmus test and the other way around, we talk about OCR in those documents coming in. We're talking about uh, a tenth of a cent per page. This is super expensive. Now you're saying a dollar a page? Come on. <laughs> Never. 
it's a, I think it's a very good point. Um, we find ourselves in a situation from a legal point of view that insurance companies may be required to communicate in an accessible fashion within the next few years by European uh, legislation. So the European Accessibility Act and a few other bits that are on the way, it's not fully clear how, how far they go. Um, but organizations that are essential to leading your life and insurance companies are usually uh, seen as, as, as uh, one such organization <clears throat> must at least communicate to the outside world in an accessible fashion. So that does not necessarily imply the incoming documents that are obviously a bit of a nightmare already now. Um, but so we will we'll have to see how this turns out. But regardless, the important thing of this exercise is to understand, and that's why your remark is very valuable, to understand the scale of things and to understand the possible approaches. And if you start thinking about this some more, you begin to understand why certain companies don't accept letters. When was the last time you wrote a letter to Amazon? You may have felt like writing a letter once in a while, but you can actually, but, <laughs> but they try to steer you towards some automated interaction uh, bits on their website, where either you just read what they know, what they want to tell you, or you enter your letter in a form like this, just plain text in a, in a physical form on the web page. And they do it for a reason, because they don't want that nightmare. <laughs> they don't want 100 million documents to be scanned or ingested into their system. They want only plain text. And that will be accessible. But very good point. 20 years ago, I met uh, somebody who was working in insurance, and um, he told me that they, at that point of time, late 90s, they already scanned every incoming document Made OCR and made it searchable. Yeah, that's how Carsten makes his money. <laughs> 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 so that's why he knows. Uh, it's, 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 yeah, it definitely emerged in the 90s and became much more relevant. Uh, it's still a, a major business area in these days. Mm. So, anyway, you need to keep these things in mind. So, it's not just that letter or that one fillable form or that one sales brochure that needs to be addressed. It's a complicated world. Um, and we have uh, all the legacy content and the OCR content that may be incoming into the organization. Um, so what can you do about these extra difficult problems? Um, and regardless of what decisions you take in your organization, I, I think one is you have to have awareness. You can't, t you can't ask from your secretary to just make every document they create accessible and leave her alone with that table. So you have to have procedures for that. So she may have an option to call somebody who helps her, or she's entitled to send it over to an outsourced service provider, or something else. You may have an internal task force to, to do this. Um, or if it's really uh, too tough, provide some alternative ways of doing this. So this will, this is lots of slides that are coming and I think we will have to sh cut them short uh, in some way because we're slightly over the scheduled time. Uh, I'll go through them relatively quickly. Um, but in the end, you will have, you have to look at a, at a matrix of um, how to do certain things and who's doing them regarding all the many types of documents you have. Um, and the options uh, we see is um, you can do them in an ad hoc fashion, just do them somehow, uh, or maybe have templates, something that guides you through the process, uh, or you have processes in some fashion. That goes all the way from automated invoice creation to you have a web-based front end where you can enter stuff and then some backend process just creates a document and provides it. And those in charge could be uh, just ordinary stuff, like every clerk, uh, secretary, and so on, could be a separate department for offering in our services. It could be an outsourced service. Or again, it could be processes that run just inside your organization. Um, so we wanted to do a little bit of this uh, brainstorming uh, uh, piece here as well. But I think we'll just cut this short. Um, maybe you have some. What was the next slide? Next slide? Yeah. <laughs> I think most people know that uh, ad hoc document creation, like opening work, just writing down, that's reality. 
in most companies that's reality. And even if you have something like a template, most people or well, most users know, oh, there's a side way to put a picture inside or something else. So that's really a nightmare, but I think in most companies that's 90% of the business. And um, we put here some points um, how to, ch to, to go with these challenges. And as you can see, um, the most important thing, and we mentioned it earlier today, is um, general accessibility know-how. People do need to know what they're doing and they need to understand what they are doing. And if you are the, the guy who is making the company accessible from A to Z for 100%, you have to understand why there are different documents and why they are existing and is there a way to create something else. And so we wrote down several points that are a challenge for ad hoc documentation and I think the most points here we have uh, then in the next slide is uh, something like template-based document creation, and that's not that much because that's, I think, the biggest point, and uh, most people dealing with that topic in reality know that this is main business. Might be 50% of your job as the consultant in this company. And that often is not your job as a consultant for accessibility. Most of it is often something like change management. But that's not your job. You are not here for that. Well, actually, one of the biggest obstacles I tend to run into is even make people aware of why accessibility and how you could go about it. And it's, I just had a meeting last week with a group of people from a major organization in Berlin that should know at least something about accessibility and their knowledge was zero. Zero. Zero point zero. Nothing. Nada. And that is really, after having been in this business for almost 10 years, Painful. Anyway, well, and that's also that makes it so challenging to just enable every person in the organization to get things right. Yeah. Templates. I think that's an important bit. If if you can't use processes for whatever reason, and there could be good reasons. Templates go a long way. So somebody thinks this through what needs to be done and, and provides those who have to actually create the document with some kind of template with a essentially with a guided procedure how to put content inside such a document. Um, and of course the question again is uh, who makes the templates for example, who understands enough about accessibility to, to be able to make the right template. <clears throat> Maybe it's again a good moment to call for an outside person or expert to help with that process. On the other hand, in larger organizations you may have to do this on an ongoing basis because you may have to adjust the templates again and again. So it may be good to have some person inside your organization. Uh, how do you roll up the templates? If you have like, if certain people have like 20 or 30 types of documents, do they need 20 or 30 templates? Maybe yes, maybe no. You have to do, you have to think about rollout. Uh, is there any special software required? You have to roll out that software, keep it up to date and so on. Um, you also have to, envision the situation where the template doesn't quite fit. So I'm involved in making standards and write standards into an ISO template. And I can tell you more often than not, I'm running into a situation where I just don't know how to use the template according to the rules. I just don't know. Yeah, and of course, I will put the document together somehow. But honestly speaking, that it will be broken somehow, at least uh, on the background of the template. And um, there may be a similar situation for other people. The secretary has to write this letter. Now there is a table and the template isn't prepared for tables. And what do you do? <clears throat> How much training is still needed? If, if, if the templates work really well, maybe you, you only need 15 minutes to explain to the person, or maybe a written piece of, uh, of instructions and yeah, use it this way and then just do it. Uh, again, you will have to monitor the whole thing and so forth. So anyway, that, that's much, less extra burden and cost and risk than for ad hoc <coughs> ways of creating documents, uh, but there's still some challenges. Processes. Um, obviously, you can't use a process for everything. If your type of document only happens once in a year, a process may be too expensive. Uh, technically, it would be feasible, but economically, maybe not very meaningful. Um, 
it's probably good for anything that you can structure, like an invoice or even a contract and things like that, uh, or where it is of it is repetitive somehow. It happens uh, many times. Um, you have usually installing and creating and installing a process is relatively expensive. It's not something you can just ask your IT department to do tomorrow and then next week everything is happy and uh, everybody's happy and everything's uh, running smoothly. <clears throat> so the, the per installation or implementation cost is relatively high, but I'm not moving. <laughs> but, um, but still, for, if you have volume, then it's probably worthwhile. Uh, and it can be combined with the template strategy. If you think of uh, web-based front-ends for, for uh, creating documents, like maybe in a document management system. Um, it, <laughs> that would maybe maybe a good option. Still, documents that are highly designed, like the sales for sure maybe is not the, the first candidate for being created by a process, but even there could be options. Uh, I'll go through these remaining slides even faster because I want, uh, want to get towards uh, the closing part of this uh, workshop. Um, and we have discussed it to, to a high degree already. So if you, if you think of stuff, everybody is in charge of making documents accessible. Uh, you have to think about knowledge and training and so on, uh, rollout of software, whatever. Um, in-house service, uh, we'll have to define procedures, who's going to use in-house services, uh, when and for what. Um, you have to face a situation that may not scale well. So in some phases of the year, you will have more documents to make accessible and other, other times it's much fewer. Um, outsourced, we talked about that uh, a little bit. Uh, it may sound like the most expensive way once you start looking at it, but it may turn out to be relatively attractive, at least for certain types of documents. Uh, if you have volume, if it's not just the occasional document you want to, be hand want to handle through an outsourced service. And the cost is predictable, you know beforehand what to pay for. This, this is often not true for anything you do internally. <coughs> I think we have that, more or less. Um, summary. <laughs> 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 so, um, I think I learned already quite a bit from what you have uh, provided and shared. Uh, I hope you, you, you ran into a couple of ideas that you haven't thought about, at least uh, in the fashion we, we did during this workshop. Um, so, what were the most important insights for you? Like, what, what kind of is very clear now in your mind that wasn't that clear in there before this workshop. Was there something like an aha effect for you? Maybe the because? Did you know that there's money? It's more complicated than it seems. It's much more complicated than it seemed at the beginning. Do you love your job as a consultant? As an accessible consultant? <laughs> Maybe, Maybe we need, need to, to change, change the batteries. batteries. Yeah. Better? Um, I think it's not only the technical and the planning uh, things. Uh, you need additionally uh, someone, somebody like like a communications expert for it to make to, to do a good job. Mm -hmm. I was a bit surprised about this monster formats, like video, audio, stuff like that. So. Mm -hmm. That this, uh, this could be a headache. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Any other, other takers? takers? So. Yeah, yeah, that's, 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 that's these, these are the findings from, from class and myself. myself. You, you don't, don't have, have to agree. agree. It's okay not to agree. We definitely believe after. The preparatory work that we put into this, this that turning, turning every employee into an accessibility specialist is probably neither cost effective nor sustainable. sustainable. That's, that's just, just not something, something that's going to work in the long run. run. Um, we, also we also found it interesting that, that if you have simpler documents, documents, you will have less cost. cost. So that, that may be a good, 
An important aspect to keep in mind, to simplify as much as we can, which is only possible to a certain degree, but we believe in many cases things can be simplified. Um, also, less documents cost less, if you have less documents. So maybe you can substitute certain documents by some other means of communication, by a plain text email or content on a web page and, and so forth. Um, also, for me, it was relatively new, uh, also for you, for you that remediation, like outsourced uh, services, are not necessarily the most expensive option, depending on what you're looking at. Um, a big pain can be any external content that includes all the incoming mail <laughs> from, from the outside world. Uh, that could be some complex content you want to put inside your own document. Um, there could be any content that you have to share in the context of your intranet because you want to enable all your employees to be able to income and communication. That's really, it can be really, be really painful already without video. Um, and 100% coverage is, is tough. So if you have le legacy documents in your archive that are scanned documents, and you may have millions and hundreds of millions of them. Nobody's seriously considering to turn all of them into some accessible format. So maybe you need an ad hoc service to handle those. The same applies to perfection. You will again and again run into a challenge that is even more challenging than the previous challenge. And things are just even more complicated than they used to be until today. Um, so this I expect to be pretty tough. Conclusions, uh, almost in time. <laughs> So, what would you recommend to people who were not in this workshop? And who are... <laughs> okay. Don't love your own job, oh my god. <laughs> okay, just don't do it, so to speak. <laughs> Any other advice? What you, would you recommend to friends who are tasked to turn their organization into a more accessible organization? I would recommend do not expect 100 percent. Okay. It's, it would be um, a great advantage to have 90 percent, for example. Mm -hmm. Multiply all your budget estimates by three. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I would recommend the uh, top ten expert. So, for you, for example, or something. So it's uh, important to get uh, more stories or something like that. Yeah. Real experience. Yeah. Any other things? Use knowledge from uh, e-course and web to print. The okay. Way, uh, to, to use web uh, interfaces. Okay, so look at other industries or business areas where um, Web-based technologies uh, have made much more inroads than maybe in, in this industry, which is true for e-commerce. I mentioned Amazon, that would be one example, but there's also like B2B platforms that have integrated all the processes into uh, web-based systems that you don't have to create individual documents anymore, you, you just operate inside the system. This is also true for, for web-to-print systems where you can create and, and order the printed uh, stuff fully in the context of a web-based platform. So, strictly speaking, no document except the document that gets printed, but no business documents. Now, of course, you get an invoice. You could also look it up in the, in the portal. Okay. Is there any recommendations? Would you recommend your job as an accessibility expert in this company? Okay. I would also like to share what we came up with. Uh, so planning comes first. That's that's like uh, get advice from an expert. Start start thinking about it before you do anything. Um, and definitely should inventorize all the aspects that apply to you, all types of documents, all processes, uh, whatever you have. Uh, you should honestly calculate cost. Take into account all the cost aspects that you may have training, repeat training for people that leave the company and have to be substituted by other people and things like that. Uh, and also have an eye on medium term sustainability. It's always, it's relatively easy to get this right this year or next year, 
but if you want to ins install something that works for several years to come, it's a slightly different story. Uh, we also think you should focus on low-hanging fruit, start where it's relatively inexpensive to make lots of progress, that was mentioned already by some of you, like take the easy ones first, or the ones that are most relevant uh, to either employees or customers or whatever. Uh, it does keep the motivation up. Don't try the most challenging one first. Um, and also provide some learning opportunities. You always learn something while you do something. You may be better equipped to atta attack the more difficult challenges afterwards. Um, we would also recommend the do-it-yourself approach only if there's a way to do it without training. So if there is a tool maybe that lets you create simple templates and then everybody can just do it, fill out the template and be done with it, we think that that could be a decent option, but don't expect more from your average employee because your employee has many other things to do, but probably not become an accessibility expert, even if you send them to training. Um, do as much uh, by means of processes as possible, so whatever is, makes, makes sense, sense to be handled, handled by a process is a process, like an automated process, some system, system document management, management system, web-based front-end, whatever it is. And then also consider sending everything else to somebody else. else. It may be much cheaper to pay that outsourced service than trying to run that service yourself. And, and I think that's, that's it. it. Two, Two minutes, minutes later, that's okay. <laughs> I would, I would like, like to thank, thank you very, very much, much for your input. input. Uh, it was definitely, definitely interesting, interesting to me, and um, we have extended at least our understanding and knowledge in this corner of uh, the accessibility document uh, world. I hope it was useful to you as well, and I hope you have uh, a few more interesting sessions this afternoon. Thank you very much. Questions left? <laughs> no, questions. So I'm here because I'm not thinking, not thinking about an insurance company, but I think of a city. So Lübeck, for example, is very much in that. Very nice city, actually. It has a lot of, yeah, but it's <laughs> the outside. So, so they have a lot of documents, and they have the, the challenge to do them um, accessible. And they don't have a different management system, they don't have money. They don't know the world, and then they don't even understand why they should do that. So what would you recommend in this such a strange case? <laughs> I think that's really hard, because if you have nothing, no will, no money, nothing, uh, that's really, really hard. The best thing is to show up what would be a possibility. In uh, my job, most people I'm having consulting with at the end, there is an accessible document. But they don't say, all right, we are now accessible. They say, oh, my document doesn't need three weeks anymore, it's only two. Because I now have a template, I have a process, something like that. That's the main effort you get into the documents, and that's the main advantage you get out of it. It's then a process, and that's something you need if you want to have accessible documents. But you have to show something. Here is your advantage, and then it will work. Sometimes it helps to say, all right, this is an accessible document that works better in this and that case. But at least there has to be something like money or will or time or anything else. Carsten?
Yeah, that's actually stuff happening, Mr. Rachel. Rachel. So there's a, an extension to Google Docs called Grackle, G-R-A-C-K-L-E, Grackle, G -R -A -C -K -L -E, Grackle um, who are extending Google Docs, which is somehow like Word and Excel and so on. Um, and they, they nudge you towards getting it right. So I think you can still get it wrong, even if, if Grackle is activated. Uh, though they also have an enterprise version, I think you can kind of nail it down some, some more and limit it to just what actually remains accessible. But I think that uh, it's a very good point. Um, and maybe we need to do our homework as uh, software developers. Okay, I would like to ask kind of from a little point of view the question. So how many of the accessible documents are processed or opened in accessible way? So if I put away the regulations and the law and everything, then uh, what is the goal? Because I, I'm thinking about something maybe uh, having accessible documents on demand because as we see, uh, covering 100% of documents may be impossible and even maybe for everybody or the accessible people will be interested maybe just about 1% one of, one of the documents. And is there any way to doing this? I, I think it's just the hypothetical question because of the regulations and so on. Uh, how many percent is usually? Yeah. Uh, the, the European Union says about 30% of all people in the European Union are in some kind disabled. So that's the use case for accessible documents. But I think it's more something for the future. If you think about PDF 2.0, what will you do with an A3 PDF file on the smartphone? That's lump, something that uh, forces to have accessible documents and that will be the future. And if you are saying, no, accessible is not in my way, you're saying, I don't like the future. And you have to know if you like the future of your PDF documents or not. Uh, in my opinion, most accessible PDF documents are better documents, even for people without any disabilities. Yeah, you won't write something for older people in four points font size, for example. You know you have to make it bigger, of course. That's a normal decision. But if you have accessible documents, it, it's a little bit forced to have better documents. Simpler documents was one thing we mentioned. My point of view is make it at least a little bit accessible if it's not possible to get more, but a tag document is better than a non-tag document, even if it's not a perfect tag document. Okay, I would say last question, so I think we are quite a bit over, so last question please. Okay, so begin, um, given that right at the beginning of this process we identified two requirements, one for content management system and two to be able to separate the content from the style of layout, you are then saying that, uh, that you believe that PDF UA has a role to play within the process. I can see that there's a, there's a role for PDF UA at the, at the end of the process where you're delivering something to the external uh, customer or whatever that, that then needs to be accessible to them. But within the process, the fact that the, the fact that it's a PDF UA means that inherently the content and the styling information is completely uh, intertwined and inseparable. So the, um, and the, the, the advantage basically that PDF is giving you is as a container format for containing all the resources together that requirement is satisfied already by the fact that you have a content management system. So within the within the company itself, within the organisation, I can't see the, the the value of using PDF UA as your document format. I think it's a very valid point. So if you can get away without turning your documents, quote unquote, into an exchange format of such as PDF UA, because you can maintain, represent, and present it inside your content management system or document management system without going through a formatting process into PDF UA. That's absolutely valid. And it would be one of the um, uh, approaches of creating less documents in exchange form and just keep them in, in the form of whatever they are that already works, in this case, for people inside the organization. 
And it's probably very useful for the internal world of an organization. Because between organizations, you have different systems, and then it becomes more difficult. <clears throat> but yes, so make fewer PDFs, and then you have to make fewer PDF UAs. So thanks a lot, and now it's coffee break time. Okay.